thank you for being at the Public Safety Committee meeting. We have three items on the agenda today. The first, we're going to hear from Susan Farag to take us through that packet, please. Good afternoon. Um, the first item for your consideration today is the supplemental appropriation for the Amos Grant, which is a yearly state grant um, that is distributed to the volunteer or to the departments. And this year's amount is for $1.96 million. I was wrong what I just told you 30 seconds ago, but there is a grant allocation that is attached on Circle 5. Oh. Um, okay. If there's no real controversy involved, council staff recommending it to you. Very good. Any questions? Okay. All right. The other two will go quite almost as fast, I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe not. Okay. Um, Mr. Drummer, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why we waited for you to. Yeah, it was 18 seconds. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, Ms. Uh, Bob Drummer is going to explain it to us, but if the attendees could, the, the people sitting at the table could please introduce themselves. Scott Goldstein, Fire Chief. Eric Bernard, Executive Director of Montgomery County Volunteer Fire Rescue Association. Marcin Goodlow, President of the Montgomery County Volunteer Fire Rescue Association. Rachel Silverman, OMB. Jennifer Bryant, Office of Management Advisory. Very good. Thank you very much. Bob, if you could lead us through, please. Okay. Uh, this is the third year of a three-year agreement between the executive and the Montgomery County Volunteer Fire and Rescue Association. As you know, uh, they represent the LFRDs and the local fire departments. And uh, the executive bargains with them over certain items with regard to funding. The uh, Items on page two of the memo is a description of the items that are in the agreement that are subject to review by the council, just as in the regular special bargaining agreements with our unions. Anything that requires an appropriation of funds or a change in law is subject to council approval for each year. And although this is, these provisions have been in the agreement for three years, the council makes decisions on the budget on an annual basis. So the uh, increases that are scheduled for FY20 in the agreement are subject to council review. They are the associating, association operating funds uh, which would increase to $255,037, which is an increase of $4,386 over last year. Upgraded uniforms and equipment, which is the same as last year, an additional $135,000 for FY20. An increase in the nominal fee, which goes from for uh, for eligible volunteers from 445 to 455 for tier one, which is a 2.2 percent increase, and from 675 to 700, which is a 3.8 percent. Can, can everybody hear Bob? You're going to have to speak up a little bit, please. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, 675 to 700 for tier two, which is 3.8 percent. The estimated cost of the nominal fee. In total is six hundred and seven thousand eight hundred sixty-eight dollars. The increase is twenty thousand nine hundred and twenty-three dollars over the FY19 amount. Once again, there is a provision for the uh, volunteer basic orientation cor course, which is the same as last year, twenty-one thousand dollars, and another fifteen thousand dollars in training. Uh, in total. The FY20 budget includes a fiscal impact of $178,309 in county funding, uh, according to the fiscal impact statement. And uh, just briefly, the main issue with this is, I, you know, I, I remember the old adage that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. This is the same thing I mentioned first year of the contract, actually the last year of the last contract, the first year of this contract, the second year of this contract, is that when this system was set up, 
the collective bargaining system, the volunteers were not, there was no EMST fee, and the volunteers weren't receiving anything from the EMST fee. Uh, since this system has been set up, which has gone essentially unchanged, the executive has been bargaining small increments in the amount of money funded in the LFRDs every year, totally ignoring the fact that the uh, EMST funds are now going to the LFRDs are approximately, I think there's numbers in here, the estimate, estimated the amount of funds for this year is 2.73 million uh, that they're getting now that they weren't getting when we were giving them the same kinds of money for the uh, under the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, and once again, we are suggesting that we at least stop giving them increases every year in light of the fact that they're getting $2.73 million in the EMST funds. And I know, and Eric is going to say that the law says that we're not supposed to use this money to supplant existing money. And of course, that wouldn't be supplanting it if, in fact, you're just not increasing the amount of money you gave them last year. It's a very small amount. It's not going to, it's not going to make our budget. I can't say that this agreement is part of the reason that our budget seems to be <coughs> potentially unsustainable. It's not part of that analysis. We're not talking about a lot of money. But if we're expecting the executive, or if we would like to have the executive reconsider the way they negotiate these agreements in light of the EMST funding, then I think the council should do something about it. So. That's my pitch, and uh, you, if you were on this committee last year, you heard it. Uh, <laughs> it didn't work so well last year, but uh, but I, I still believe that that's what the, that's what I recommend. Anyway. Okay. Well, and I appreciate your your insight and and your thoughts on it. I as as we discussed last year, I believe that if there's supposed to be an agreement. That, that that should come as a negotiated agreement between the parties, not at, at the budget table for this one, but for, you know, in general. And, and I, I uh, so therefore, I'm, I am supportive of the additional $25,309 as the whole thing uh, progresses. But I do, is there a listing of what was sent to each volunteer department and, and how much they actually spent. Do you have? Is there a, an accounting of that? And I don't know that we've seen that. If we could get, I don't remember seeing it. If we could get copies of that, please. Susan can outline uh, the correlation, but I believe Susan, circle 40 through 40, 40 through 50 of the big of the next packet, packet of the operating budget. The next packet you're saying. That's our. Uh, semi-annual uh, reporting of EMST um, balances and distribution, and that shows by department with the description of the, of the project, a amount distributed. It sure does. Amount uh, yep. outstanding. So this is done every six months uh, okay. in, in compliance with the EMST law. So this may be your request, sir. Yeah, I think it is. Um, if you wish something else, please ask us, and we'll work with Susan and OMB to you know, get it to you. Okay, and then as far as, and, and thank you for being that quick on this one, see if you can be as quick on the next one. How about the Amos funds? Is there a listing of that as well? Yeah. Is it also part of this packet, the second packet? Well, it's not as um, going to the first packet, as Susan said, page five of the first packet. This is the distribution of what's being proposed for this one. This right. Yeah. But we can provide a comparable chart to the the EMST update as to what was distributed, distributed. Yeah. That's and a good what word. Was spent and what the remaining balance is. Right. That's what I'm. Bio that's what I'm interested yeah, in. We can do that. Okay. Is there any? Go ahead, please. Yes, I would like to address one comment that was made that the county executive totally ignored the EMST funding. That's absolutely incorrect. We are accountable working with the fire chief and the executive 
to uh, give justification and review, not only with his financial staff, but with the executive. We have to prove every penny of both of those funds and how they're being used. And when you consider one piece of apparatus can be a million dollars, both of those funds are critically needed to serve our public. Okay, very good. Anybody from the committee, please, Tom. Uh, well, I, I agree with the chair on this one. I agree with Bob on the point about it being a small amount of money and not responsible for the county's budget challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you agree with both of us. That was good, yeah. <laughs> Did you have anything else to add, Gabe? Obviously new to this, certainly understand where Bob's coming from, but I agree with the chair on this one as well. So is that a 3-0 for? 3-0. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you very Mr. much. Mr. Chairman, can I ask yes. just, uh, as long as we're on the larger topic of state aid for um, our fire service, do we apply for any um, bond bills for firehouses this year? Okay. Uh, not this year. Those are usually done right. individual LFRDs, right. not sure. through the association or the county. But right. no, none no. were applied. Okay. And are there any expansions planned of our smaller volunteer houses, anything like that? Absolutely. There's a, a, I have a tracking list of about 12 different projects at different stations that are in the concept or the, the schematic design phase where there's an intent, a desire, some you know vision as to what's being considered. Mm -hmm. um, these are not in the CIP right. as projects themselves, so so those would be ones that could be eligible for that you know approach. Right. I just uh, only raising it because you know in the past there's been a lot of state support, um, uh, probably not enough requests, but state support for um, bond bills on fire stations in general. So um, if we have projects, I just think we ought to be applying, put in, you know, putting in bond requests, working with our state delegates to do that, I'd be happy to go down and testify for them or whatever's needed. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? If not, thank you very much, Bob. Susan, if you could please come back. And the third item that we're going to have is the F20, uh, FY20 operating budget and the FY19 to 24 CIP amendments for Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service. And I guess everybody is staying at the table. Some people are leaving the table. <laughs> And if you could please introduce yourself, the, those joining the table, the person joining the table. Uh, Dominic Del Pozo, Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, uh, Fiscal Management. Very good. Thank you, Dominic. And Susan, if you could lead us through, please. Sure. Uh, the recommended budget for FY20 for the fire department is $223 million. It's about a 2.4% increase. It's the first time we've seen an increase for a while, and there were no recommended apparatus cuts, okay. which I was happy to see this year. Um, the county executive has recommended two very significant items that help address some ongoing structural deficiencies, which I outline in page 3. It includes an additional $2.184 million for overtime. And it also has 20 new career firefighter positions at a cost of $179,000. The reason that number is so low is they're going in the second class um, and will graduate late. So um, the FY20 recommended budget, as far as overtime goes, is going to be budgeted at approximately $18 million, which is an increase over the past several years where it's been stagnant at $16.2 million. I've got a chart on page 3 again that shows actual overtime cost overruns. For FY19, uh, actual overtime has already exceeded the budgeted amount. It's $18.4 million, and that was through March 16th of this year. Um, the overtime hasn't been accurately budgeted.
it's that type of thing. A couple need a little bit more explanation. The holiday pay reduction, that was a bargained issue uh, last year for uh, election day. And since there is no election day this year, um, that's being reduced. The safer grant shift to the fire fund. The federal safer grant partially funds 10 firefighter positions for three years, but that's a graduated funding. The grant covers 70% of the cost for the first two grant years and then 35% in the third grant year. So this shift in funding to the fire fund just reflects the fact that the grant fund is, the fire the grant is in its third year of the grant and is so funding less. There's a shift of the ESRI enterprise agreement to DTS. The cost of the ESRI contract will be consolidated in FY20 under the DTS budget and that shift reflects a new agreement that permits all of the county departments to use GIS software. The risk management adjustment changes every year. The recommended total for this year is 14 million, and it's a reduction of about 1.5 million, and that reflects reduced expense, expenses and projections associated with workers' compensation claims. We do have one new enhancement for the Wheaton Rescue Squad for $174,000. This uh, addresses some failures to respond during shift changes. If we could be clear on that one, we're calling it failures to respond, but that means some other um, some other station actually responds. It's not like we're not responding. Ultimately, you're correct. A 911 resource is arriving to the scene of the incident, but it's coming from a further distance, which the unit that was primary, the unit that was closest and recommended by the, the dispatch computer did fail to respond. So we would be arriving at the emergency but it's going to be three four five some magnitude of minutes later because the vehicle is coming from further away yeah and, and i'm fine with the enhancement don't get me wrong i just don't want someone to believe that some, we didn't show up at a fire or whatever whatever the situation was we did respond it might have taken us longer than it should have but we did respond and these failures to respond are happening during shift change time when the volunteers are staffing weeknights overnight until 7 a.m. and occasionally careers, um, they have to leave to go to their day jobs. So this type of overtime was paid for to fill these gaps on weekdays, but it was eliminated in FY13 operating budget. This funding restores that transitional overtime support for the Wheaton Rescue Squad um, and it supports during these hours, one rescue squad, one basic life support transport unit, and one advanced support life support paramedic chase unit. Uh, there are charts showing failures to respond rates um, included on Circle 14. The next issue was not in the line item crosswalk of the FY20 recommended budget, but it's dealing with Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad funding, which was an issue last year. They are the only volunteer department that does not pay for certain costs. All the rest are funded through the fire department budget. Um, but Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad has been asking for the past several years to have parity in this type of funding. And $88,000 was included last year in the county executive's recommended FY19 budget. I don't remember if it was at council or public safety committee, but you recommended an additional 18 be put on the reconciliation list and that was approved. Yeah. And that funding has remained for this year, FY20. Um, it was my understanding that they had not made a formal request for FY20, but I've talked to Ms. Silverman about it and apparently it just came in too late for consideration. But their, their funding needs are substantially the same as they have been. This recommended budget includes 176,000, again, the same amount as approved last year. Okay. Um, the Volunteer Fire and Rescue Association agreement, Mr. Drummer spoke about in his packet, included in volunteer issues is the EMST fund for FY20. We have approximately 19.5 million that has been budgeted uh, revenue to come in from that fund, of which 2.731 will be distributed to volunteers the MST fund requires two reports, um, semi-annual reports, one on health data in addition to call and transport data. And that one, OMB has sent over to me and I'll need to distribute it to you. I didn't have it in time for the packet. Um, but they also rep they provide a semi-annual report that you discussed in the last item on EMST reimbursement that provides information on the total funds in the restricted account, the total amount to be distributed to the LFRDs, each project and their allocations and how much has actually been spent or encumbered by each LFRD. Uh, the April 15th, 2019 report is attached at circles 40 through 50. 
for CIP projects. We've had several amendments transmitted since January 15th. The first one deals with the White Flint Fire Station, which the recommended PDF is attached at circles 28 through 30. This adds $1.1 million to construct additional space for a future police substation to be co-located with the fire station. Once the shell is built out, it'll provide growth capacity for the second district police station. Uh, the police department has advised that this substation was always planned as part of the overall policing scheme related to the new 2D police station. And adding the substation in the White Flint area will provide police officers with office space when needed for things like report writing, interviews, and meetings. They do much of this work in their cars with their, with their mobile computers, but it can't all be done there. And it will also provide space for community outreach activities. Additionally, the Rockville Fire Station 3 renovation, um, this is pushing out funding of $500,000 from FY20 to FY21, uh, primarily because it, the new site for relocation has not yet been secured, and this will allow additional time for site selection. And, and I'm assuming, is Eric still here? I'm still here. Yeah, there you are. You, you moved on me. I'm assuming Rockville is okay with that. Do you know? If... Yes, sir, and we've been working closely with the fire chief and his staff on this. Okay, thank you. And the last one for consideration is the apparatus, apparatus replacement program on Circle 37. This is an ongoing project, and it provides for the replacement of fire apparatus and EMS vehicles. Um, they, they do a projection on, on needs, but that can change, you know, as, as, as situations change as well. The recommended amendment in this reduces total project funding by $4.6 million. This reduction stems from the use of EMST funds to purchase apparatus. Uh, two aerial ladder trucks and approximately 13 EMS units. The number and mix of the apparatus planned for purchase in the whole FY1924 CIP is not affected by the reduction. And a replacement chart is provided for you on Circle 17. At this point, council staff's recommending approval as submitted. Thank you. Um, and I'm okay with it too, and we're going to certainly hear from the committee members. But Susan, I know that the public safety radio tower issue has caused a lot of excitement, obviously. And um, and I understand there could be some new delays and what that means. Could we could we have all the stakeholders come and have a discussion with us sometime early June? Yes, my, my, my understanding of the situation is that the current radio system is past its life expectancy, the towers. That the current vendor does not support the system, there's no replacement, new replacement parts available, that they, the, um, Executive Branch has purchased parts off of eBay, hoping that they have the correct types of replacement parts. And there's also a problem with who could actually service this if certain parts of the system um, break. So there is an additional delay in putting the new system up. It had last been projected to be up and operational in the fall of 2020. And there are two tower sites that are under consideration for relocation, including the one at the ICC and George Avenue, as well as Bretton Woods, um, mostly due to community pushback. Uh, the last thing I've heard about it is that the county executive has agreed with the state that the state tower at the ICC and George Avenue would not be built. So we have, there's no recourse in trying to get it built at that point. So there will be delays. There will be additional costs. The police and the fire department, at least, have to have contingency plans in place in case there's any kind of significant failure of the current system. Um, as far as I know, that's not budgeted for in FY20. So I'd like to bring the joint, it should be the Joint GO and the Public Safety Committee back to look at this in much more depth in the middle of June after budget's over. Okay, I'm fine with that. Hopefully you all as well. Go ahead. Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, it's very nice to be in this hearing and I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, will, are there any safer grants in our future? Or is that a one-time thing? Oh, uh, no. Applications have been submitted. We uh, did that about 45 days ago was when the submission deadline uh, ended out for safer. So we'll probably be not Programs even September like or October before we have any sense on the awards in, in this cycle. Great. Okay. Anything else? Yep. Yeah. Are we good? 3-0. Yep. Thank you very much for being with us. I think a lot of places are, you know, they just sort of go in and...